I'd like to suggest that learning maths, learning maths is something like, maybe I should have um, not put an equal sign. I should have said a, um, approximately equal sign. Learning maths is something like, actually I think it's a lot like, traveling the world. Traveling the world. How many of you are, um, have actually done any substantial amount of traveling? Anyone here? Like with their families and that kind of thing? Yeah, how far have you traveled? Um, to Europe. Yep. Right, okay, you've done a few continents, that's pretty cool. Um, most, of, most of you who, who didn't raise your hands are probably like me, and maybe you've gone like back where the rest of your family lives, and that's pretty much it. Like I haven't even, myself, I haven't been for uh, like 10 years now, okay. So I'm not much of a traveler, but for those who do, right, you travel the world, and I think even if you haven't traveled, you kind of picture the world in terms of distinct places. Like, like cities, right? There's, there's, oh, I did, I did New York, and then I did London, and then I did um, um, Hong Kong, and so on, right? And they're kind of, in most people's brains, they're quite distinct things, right? Um, but here's the thing, here's the thing. Just like um, the world, right? In maths, you think of distinct things, you think of topics. You're like, we're doing this topic and then we finished that one. We spent three weeks on it and we moved on to another one. And it's a completely separate thing. Your brain thinks a totally different way and so on. But that's, um, that's not the way maths is. Just like that's not the way the world is. In the world, all these different places and cities, they're all connected. Sometimes by obvious ways like roads. Um, and sometimes by not so obvious ways like, say, Hong Kong and London. Deeply connected. Why? Because it was a colony, right? And you're like, well, you know, for all of the differences, that you could think of it this way, the DNA of the two cities is the same, right? Now, in maths, it's exactly like that. In maths, it's exactly like that. You've got topics, cities, in maths, if you like, that look like they have nothing to do with each other, but they're actually very, very deeply connected. For example, Yesterday we ended with this. Do you remember? I said, this is not just binomial theorem, the topic. I said, here's an equation. And I said, this is the binomial theorem. This is it. This is what the whole topic is named after, right? And I did a bit of monkeying around Pascal's triangle, right? And um, we came up with, does anyone remember? It was a fraction of some kind. What is NCR? You've got an N factorial on the top. Which is why we spent yesterday looking at factorials. What was the denominator? R factorial times n a minus r factorial. Good. Okay. Now, let's just pause and remember what this result was. Because all we did was we established it, kind of, in a weird sort of roundabout way. And, and then we left it at that, right? What is this talking about? What is the definition of this thing? What is this? We, we like, second, first, second lesson in this topic. We gave it a definition. We said, this is what this notation talks about. What was it talking about? I was talking about coefficients, right? Coefficients of what? Yeah, we, we were looking at a binomial expansion, weren't we, right? In particular, we were looking at this guy, and we said, well, when you expand them out, you have a whole bunch of terms. How many terms? N plus one terms, right? If it's squared, you'll get three terms. If it's cubed, you'll get four terms and so on. Out of those n plus 1 terms, if you just look at the coefficients, we're just going to name them. We're just going to call it that. Okay? Uh, the r coefficient will be mcr. Okay? So you've got coefficients of this algebra stuff, and then we somehow connected it to factorials that we got out of Pascal's triangle. Right? Now, I gave you a demonstration. I would not call what I showed you yesterday a proof, uh, but it still landed us on the right solution. Okay? Now, um, there's two important proofs you need to know. And um, one of them is by mathematical induction. Now, I'm not going to show you that proof. You can go and read it. It's in your textbook. Okay? Um, but what I want to mention first is it sort of makes sense that you would do this by mathematical induction. Can you tell me why? Why would, it make, why would mathematical induction be a, a good thing to appeal to? One of the first things you think of if you want to prove this. Think about it. What do you know about mathematical induction? What kinds of problems does it address? Give me an example of a problem you could prove by mathematical induction. 
Prove what? Come on, you can think of an example. Prove a divisibility thing, right? So for example, uh, just a trivial thing, okay? Prove that, you know, 2n, right, all of these are even numbers, right? Now, obviously it's true, but you can do it by mathematical induction. Now, why is mathematical induction a sensible way to go about this? How, what is the principle of mathematical induction? You're actually missing something off the end of here. If we were proving this by math mathematical induction, they would say four, and then they'd give you a domain. What kind of domain would they give you? Yeah, yeah, all positive integers. One, two, three, so on. Mathematical induction works with these kinds of problems, right? And it, I don't know if you remember, um, these names are important, where they're, where they're all separated out. We call these the discrete numbers. Not to be confused with shh, discrete numbers, but as in discrete, they're separate from each other, okay? The opposite is continuous. Um, factorials. Factorials are at home with the discrete numbers. We saw before, and it's kind of confusing when you think about halves or fractions, those kinds of things, right? So mathematical induction makes sense. Turns out the proof by mathematical induction is pretty long and awkward and difficult. It's very demanding. Um, I mean, a lot of proofs by mathematical induction are. Okay, so instead, I am going to show you a different proof of this result, and I want you to follow along with me. I think it's far quicker, and it's far more elegant. But it involves something like this. It involves me appealing to something that you would never think that you would appeal to if you wanted to prove something like this. Okay, so make a subheading for me. Proof of the binomial theorem. Okay. 